Michael, we're back on another episode of actually doing some great accessories upgrade on our Tesla Model 3. And I'm going to show you guys, we got some new different hubcaps available to change them out. If we don't like to stick with the blended, uh, pretty much gray. Uh, now I do want to get the one blend gray and that's the alligator alloy rim set. We're going to be actually installing today. So, uh, these wheels seems a little bit kind of a dusty and dirty. That's okay. Cause we're going to give them a good, uh, rinse a little bit before we install our alligator clip. So let's see some of the good items we got in today. Let me go and see if I can sonic boom. Oh, might be locked from the inside. Okay. So I'm not sure why I guess my, Oh, I turned off my airplane mode so I can actually record a little bit longer without having interference and with that. Being said, it does not detect my phone as a valet key anymore, so I'll have to actually bring the valet key out. So here we go. It's a nice sunny day. Who knows how long this is gonna last? So whatever few hours we have left, let's make the most of it. And sometimes I do side swipe a little bit, but more than likely it works for me with the sonic boom. So here we go. We got great stuff here. All bunch of alligator uh, alloy. This is what we're going to install today. You can see here. It's more of a lighter gray. I was hoping to be a little bit darker gray. But if it, you look at it, oh man, it doesn't match too much. But I guess it'll have to do. It's better than having the rim scraped up, right? So there it is right there in comparison to our alloy rims. So we're going to be installing this bad boy later on today. And then um, a lot of... A lot of great stuff came in today. Uh, you can see here, it looked like I delivered for Amazon pretty much. <laughs> but everything you see here is pretty much underneath my product description of what I actually installed and what I prefer. So I always put things in the list of must-haves or, you know, probably, sorry, first of all I need is to get my tripod if it's in here. Oh no, I don't even have my tripod in here. That's a concern. It might be actually here. Who knows? I might have brought it. There it is. Just like tucked away right there. This tripod's probably in the description too somewhere if you need it. I use some of the best that I can find in the market. And these tripods here, very flexible. Allows me to grip things very easily. So I'm gonna put them on right now. Here we go. You can adjust them and everything. Just kind of slip them on. And there you go, I'm, the hand, I'm hands free now. There I am. Okay, so we're gonna get this guy installed shortly. Uh, but first of all, let's see what's inside these all these other boxes. So we'll need to bring a little knife cutter here there we go this will work and let's go through it god i hate carrying this thing around my car just don't want to have any brutality i was really careful to drive around town not worrying about um you know not having not worrying about the scratches and you know what i mean so all the things that could happen to me well before i get my uh, you know gator but we'll see We'll see how this one goes. So that one's a graphite, supposedly. Or let's see what it is. Let's see what color it is. It should tell you maybe on the box. There you go. See, it says graphite. So we did get the right color. This is not just the gray um, color. I don't know that there's just a gray color, but this is the graphite, which is AKA gray. Same. So that's the closest match we can get. So. That or we go with, I wanted red too to try it out. You know, throw a little flare in there. But then I figured, you know what, if I'm gonna do white, it might just stand out a little too much. Uh, red will stand out for sure too, but just something about red. All right, let's see what all these items entail. Some of them are just chemicals. Speaking of which, we're gonna need to mix some lubricant solution. So this is our pretty much our slip solution for our tire. We're gonna get this guy sprayed all over this. It's also a good way to wash our wheels as well, I guess. Little Johnson's baby uh, shampoo right here, you can see. A little big bottle, actually. A little mister. We can mist it. And so we'll put like a little squirt in here. Well, let's see here. It comes in a white pearl matching my car as well. How cool is that? Actually, all these were well, well thought up before I actually ordered them. So I don't think I just like all coincident. This is supposed to actually miss more than spray, so I'm not sure how good that's going to do for us. But it's good to know. I guess we can just open this up. There we go. Very easy to open. And I guess this little baby shampoo here just comes. I'm sure there's a little valve that eventually will pop it, right? Or will it ever pop? Is it ready to be squirt down? Or maybe it's not even open from the inside. Who knows? I'm not a pro at this. 
uh, baby shampoo anywhere. Uh, should be. A, is there a safety? There. And usually you click it. Hopefully I didn't break it already. Probably did. <laughs> Alright, so let's go and squirt. Just one little squirt. You don't need a lot in there. Yeah, I'm not able to squirt either, so. Doesn't seem like I got it all right yet. Alright. How do you open this? There's no instruction how to get this set up, but. Let me see what I can do here. Alright, so here we go. Johnson's baby shampoo. Oh, there we go. Well, all you really need is just slightly a little bit. I guess you have to introduce some air in there. Oh, look at that. I just broke it. <laughs> uh, at least you guys learned not what to do, huh? Okay. All right, so I introduced some air in there. Maybe that'll give the suction it needs. All right, after this, I'll just give it to my niece. She can use it for her hair. So we'll just do a little squirt. Supposedly, it's supposed to come out. Interesting. Interesting how they made it this way. All right, this is supposed to intrude. I can see it pushing, but this might be a safety mechanism. Okay, there we go. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take this little dip here. And we are just going to scrape it a little bit onto this one like a little honey drop. There we go. Just kind of get all in there. Yep, there we go. Works just as good. Closes up back. I'm not sure it'll lock back, but it's just like kind of like there. All right, so anyway, we got this here. So this is gonna be our spray solution here, and we're gonna fill the rest up with water. So I guess we could do that now as we go. Get that all squared in. All right, here we go. Oh, nice day today, a lot of green. All right. This is open, I assume. All right. There we go. Let's get this filled in. Create a little sud there. This should be good enough. There we go. All right, we'll close that back. I guess this is closing it. I feel a tightening, righty tidy, right? All right, let's go and put the cap back on and let's see how this product works. Now this one's easier just to open up. All right, so here we go. Oh wow, there we go, very good. So this is supposed to help us coat and lubricate our tires like this. Look at that, look at that. Oh wow, look like I'm a professional hairstylist almost. This is what they use it for by the way. Uh, look at that, it actually stays on for a little bit, look. Look at that, letting go of the trigger and it still comes on. So there you go. It makes the most out of this mist, so I think it's great for cleaning your bumper, bugs and everything. That way you don't waste your chemical just dripping off. This thing is freaking awesome. And it almost matches the car. <laughs> More than I could say for the... The rim guard but we'll see we'll put it in there i think it's going to have its own kind of bling hope it doesn't look too tacky but the idea of it it's supposed to be a sacrificial part so hopefully it complements it so here we go i'm hoping so let's go ahead and put this aside here let's go ahead and just open this truck bin with all our stuff that we were using all right even the broken baby shampoo here i thought this was a small bottle actually but that's okay, you can always use this for a multiple purpose. Kids can use it, anyone pretty much. So that was in what's in this box here. Let's take out some more. Find out what they are. Here's a cap for the baby shampoo. Oh man, I just, <laughs> it'll be easier to be able to spend, who knows, I might be able to put in a spray bottle like that one and do away with the whole shampoo thing. All right, so these ones are just different wheel covers, uh, which I'll show you just a, Give you an idea these ones are the black ones what do you guys think about having this guy here versus the black i think black i don't know just something about making it not blend in sticks out like a sore thumb and that's why i was hoping this just blends in and matches a little bit more better 
but that's okay I can live with it because it does kind of match the inner like um, you can see here this gray matches a little bit of the inner shadow gray but this black one definitely stands out a lot more I mean let's see how clean it looks if it looks really plasticky or papery definitely not it so we'll find out we'll put this later on we'll probably do a little bit more of our cleaning in the rust area maybe a final you know spray down with our rust oleum and then we'll see how that one does there we go you can see here all the part i kind of like this little storage area in fact i got all the spray here maybe i can even transfer some of these bulky stuff and put it in one of these these little small nice bulky area but let's go and check out the next item we've got a few uh, items here to check out all right this one has a little tear already i can just tear it might be multiple stuff in there we'll see all right probably more i'm not sure what this is all right some stuff fell loose oh these are even cooler check these out wow these are actually more heavier duty than i expected them to be now this is the same black one but what's different about this one it actually rotates and lights up meaning that it takes some kind of reactive Thing. when it spins the wheel is like a magnet and it charges self charges the battery for it to light up and to be honest with you this black one right here looks so much more more OEM glossy and less you know plasticky you can say than the other one but let's find out let's take it out of the package real quick again all these items here I'll test them out first before I really put them in the must-have or just additional accessories additional accessories are not that important but must have, I really believe that they really serve a good purpose to either complement, make it easy for the end user. So these are for probably accessories, maybe a static, but they do really well. Again, they, they look like really good quality. Look at the fit and finish. Look at that. It feels like OEM and it spins with you. So it doesn't really matter what. And that's the thing why I'm doing this also is to lift the wheel so I can place these wheels accordingly to this valve stem pointing down. But with this one, it doesn't even matter. It'll spin any direction you want it to. It's like little spinners, right? Without the entire rim, but just a little center cap. So I really like this one, actually. Well, let's give the other one a justice and open that one by its wrap as well. I'm glad everything is coming along. So let's check this one out. I should get a little bevel for my, um, my phone here. I know I, my videos are really shot raw. You guys pretty much see everything and they're not even edited oh wow okay this is not scratch or anything like that but let me just peel this one off just get a good feel for this one versus this one. you see that big difference this is almost like you know like you could probably home make this one and this one looks like his cats come from the factory because the way it shine there's a chrome probably that chrome piece made a difference right there well this one's just kind of white in so let's see Mm, I'm not really feeling it because it's such a matted white it stays out it sticks out too much versus this guy here Who's chrome? I think the chrome just complements a little bit better, but that's my personal preference by the way I really like it. It looks like almost like a Maserati sort of luxury kind of kind of a logo You know uh, as far as the chrome goes It just makes it look like a Maserati. You know what I mean? So here we go again a little bit full more captured so I don't know, I might go with this one versus this one. This one makes it look like, you know what I mean? Like a sticker, you just peeled on like a vinyl sticker versus the actual chrome. Of course this, you know, is almost double the price really because of its functionality of being able to light up and spin and all that a good torque. Um, it comes with a flathead screwdriver, which is convenient. I don't know why they don't give you flathead screwdriver to pluck these guys out, unless they give you like a big huge suction, I think. Like a suction, like, if you were to be able to get like a huge suction just perfectly fit in there and just like be able to pull it out that way, I think it's so much more cleaner. Because a screwdriver, you're going to be picking on it. It's going to create all kinds of worry and possibly um, mess. So let me go in. Wow, they're all in there? Okay, I guess so. I guess all these right here are pretty much four in the box. So where's the cover for it? Oh, the cover just fell off. <laughs> All right, I can see. All right, there it goes. See, it's made in China too. 
everything's made in China uh, as far as these parts here. Okay, so we understand what these are for, right? Well, um, I can keep these back in the box here just to make sure it's protected. This as well. We already seen how this one looks like. Have we seen what the red one looks like? I think I have a red one somewhere here. And there it is, right there in the corner there. Let me go and grab that red one now. Let's check out the red one, shall we? Let's see what the red one can do for us. I should be getting starting on the rim set soon, but you guys will eventually see it. Huh, the red one does give it a little bit more of a flare. Let's see. Especially, you know, a little bit of red, you can always see really well, the, like this little red dot right here and so forth. You got, you got to put a little bit of a red bow stem there. So a little red splashed into the mix, I, I don't mind. But I, I don't know about going overboard and putting red all over your, like, steering wheel and stuff like that. That's just not my preference, but some people, they love it. I mean, I think it looks great, like a JDM Honda sort of deal back in the days where we used to put... The red emblem in our hunt. Oh shoot, I peeled this off. If you know, right off the bat, there's already a crunch mark here. It's very sad, unfortunately. I wish they do a little bit better quality control. Because if you see the crunch mark here, that doesn't look too... So, what do you think, Vanna? But not? What do you think? The red? Versus... Too much stand out. Yeah, too much stand out, right? Versus the black. I had the black open earlier. I like it's this one right here. See this one? This is the black. No, wait, don't come close to me. Okay, last one here. Which black is better to you? Oh, I can't get this guy open now. Right now, now he decides to really close securely. <laughs> okay, I'll show you. I'll show you two blacks. Okay. Where's the other black again? There we go. You see this one? All right. You can't have black and white. Yeah, I think so. Okay, this is black, okay? Okay, now... Okay, now check this one out. This one also spins, so you can go any direction. Which one? You would recommend a little bit chrome? All right. I don't know. I think the quality and the other one is better. The one with the chrome a little bit. Are you need to move the truck? Huh? You using the truck today? Yeah. Okay. No worry. I just got baby shampoo. I need to create solution. Oh, by the way, look at the spray right here. It creates a lot more mist. Just to be able to, you know, whatever I think you can use to wash and cover more. Don't waste your chemical. So I think that's a good way to explain that one okay so he's moving let me go ahead and get all these contaminants out before he takes it with me all right okay perfect okay so we got his feet back on it let's take a look at uh was this the red one yeah that was the red one the red one yeah look at that right off the bat it already came with a dent so there you go. These are all new packages, by the way. So that's probably not going to do it. Let me go and put it back in his wrapper. All right, we tried. And then the black one, it has a possibility still with me. Again, I'm more like um, subtle. I'm not too, I guess what you could say, not flamboyant, but uh, not too jazzy out there i do like to but i also like the clean look clean stock look i can say that's why i got the ppf film and not anything like vinyl wrap because you could do a lot more color with vinyl wrap or stealth mode i didn't want to change anything i like to keep you know things that are maintained restored as long as possible so let me go ahead and put this guy back in before he gets scraped anywhere yeah this thing creates a little suction lock but uh when you need it to open <laughs> for show it doesn't but when it opens on its own it just does it all right, we'll keep that guy there. All right, let me go and bring this over here because eventually we're going to be starting using these items here. Very cool, very cool mister. I really think that's probably one of the most coolest things they get thought so far. All right, let's see what this guy is. Model 3 accessories. Hmm, I could probably see it from here. 
Oh, it's this noise reduction kit, pretty much. This one is allows you to be able to, you know, look at it. It looks like it came in a very nice clean package individually. By the way, this is actually the strip that I use from another one. I had some extras. When you actually buy these uh, noise reduction kit, I believe they might come with something that's a little bit more in between, a little extras. Something like this, maybe. Let me see if I can find one that's a better example. Now these are actually a little different than the other ones I have. Well, anyway, what I did was I cut a little bit of strip because you remember those, these bands here, they have a tendency to actually come in, right? So let me go and give you guys a zoom in. You remember these bands right here, right? They have a habit of these, they call them the top noise reduction bands or something like that, top seal window. Well, anyway, what these ones is, they actually come in like this. They start eating away your OEM seal, you know, it's not good, I don't like it. I mean, a little tacky too, right? So what I did was I cut a little bit of this, you can see this little piece of rubber uh, tubing. That actually came from one of the door seals accessories I got. I just cut a little bit piece and I was able to create sort of a U-turn U curvature on it and allow that band to stay in place. So you can see here, this has been here for about, I think about three months now and so far it hasn't split open like this come in it was before before i had this installed well not really it wasn't that hard to install i mean i just did it while i installed it so you can see here curvatures i would pull it out but i just don't want to ruin it you know what i mean it took forever just to, not forever but it took enough where you know playing around to get to where i want to sit so now it's sitting plushly and holds it so if you have a problem with that try to get a little piece of rubber cut in half and just uh, you can see the other side the other side might not be too bad it sticks out a little bit from a top surface, but very hardly noticeable. Just a very slight, small nudge. So you can see this one here. Woo, see, this one's already pulling in. Even with this right here, it can't help it, but it pulls in a little bit. You see there? It's pulling in almost a little bit, but without it, it would have been pulled in like this all the way already. So this thing right here just kind of wraps around it, creates a little shell donut, so it can allow it to be able to hold itself. So it wasn't that bad at all. And then again, that was from the door seal kit. So I'm contemplating putting a door seal or not because I just don't, I, if I do put the door seal, I gotta be really careful because I have PPF now and I wanna make sure it goes at least on it because if you put it rubbing against the PPF, what happens is every time it closes, that rubber starts rubbing off your PPF film and that's not really what you want. So if you are gonna put on it, I would probably do it halfway on the PPF edge and the other half actually on the car itself. And just have it help each other reinforce each other just like i did with the you know the pretty much your you know your tape you know half of it's on the actual um surface paint the other half is on the ppf so that's why i want i want to just share with you guys so so that's pretty much it this comes with the whole um this is the back door back door okay back door pillar and this comes with the small trunk okay actually the trunk is all they give you is like two little strips it's just from here to here. And what that does, it just allows you to be able to not have, you know, dirt and debris in the hinges. Because a lot of people get dirt and debris on these hinges. And it just creates a horrible, um, you know, way to, you know, clean up after yourself. That's why I love these flaps. I mean, at first I thought it was the tackiest idea to put flaps on a nice Model 3. But in fact, it was so, it was easier to clean up. That's what I'm just saying. You know, I didn't have all these, like I said, splats of water grids just swerving through. So it was so much easier. Sorry I didn't capture too much of the all around the car when I was doing the other video. It was kind of, kind of a, you know, waste. In fact, I'm doing a lot of rambling too right now. But let me get back to this. Uh, it comes with some A-pillars. A-pillars are, what those are, are right here. They're A-pillar seals. I'm not sure if I'm correct. But these are A-pillars right here, the front of the car. Then we got the B pillar, and then we got the C pillar. So those are called pillars there. So this might go somewhere, if I'm not mistaken. It might, perhaps, I don't think so, but it might, I don't know. I think the window seal is pretty well array right here, so I'm not sure what this A pillar is for. It might be inside here maybe, but I'm not sure why would they put one over here like that. So Model Z for pillar A, Model Z for pillar A. Hmm. Or it could be somewhere here, anything in this beam, maybe. So it could be something that seals this whole gap right here. And I, if you notice here, I already have one already on there. So you can see here. 
did pretty well job actually. I even created a little bit extra slack right there. But I just want to get this so I can show you guys. You see that? It comes, this is actually not part of the OEM, but I was able to cut right here. And you can see that it goes all the way down to this very edge right there. See? And down there side, yeah, same way. You can see here. I think over time it probably kept its pressure point. You can see that. It's kind of a little offset. It's kind of ugly to me, but you know what? It's not noticeable too much. Only because it's actually not supposed to even be there. You can see here all the gunk. That's the only hard part about this is when you have to clean it back up. It does leave a little bit of residue. But other than that, it seals really nicely. You can see there. It goes all the way to the edge right here. I wish I can go any further, actually. That would be okay with me. So, yep. There it is. So, I got to be careful peeling it off because I don't want to affect my PPF. Same with this guy right here. See the PPF is cut just before it hits it. So we're good there. But it creates a nice seal. So I'm debating uh, whether to add on the, the door seal in some more or just keep it the way it is. Let's see what else comes with it. Uh, model Big P. I'm not sure what that Big P is for right now. Model Big D. <laughs> what he's trying to tell me. Uh, model Big D for front cover. Uh, this might be for the hood, maybe. Again, these are from China, so the English might be a little bit offset. And then the B pillars, B pillars, B pillars. B pillars are something like right here, this area. But for me, this is very small. If you look at my B pillar here, this thing takes it all the way down. All the way down. You know what I mean? So, and there's only two of them here, so I'm not sure what they're trying to say secure wise. Just this lower part or something? Who knows? But we'll find out eventually. Okay, and then it comes with instructions too, by the way. So whatever I just said there, you can actually see, you know, there it goes. Kind of like the, the door one put on there. I had to remove it because they wanted to put a PPL film uh, nicely wrapped. So I had to get that taken care of. There we go. There's a side trunk. Oh, these are all like individual little slabs of instructions. Hmm, this might be it. Well, okay, goes back the other way. So, a lot of full instructions there. We'll take a look at that at a later time. But let's go and get started here. I think we got all the tools we need to uh, do the job. I think that's about it. Oh, we actually also need some, I call them PCP uh, cutters, PCP pipe cutters, because we'll need to cut this nylon because this is really tough nylon that's all it is and a pair of scissors ain't gonna really just cut it for you you can take some garden clippers you know I think those are strong enough garden clippers they look like Let's see if I can find one here you can probably get these guys here these guys will probably clip it I know they clip tie straps like nothing I did that on the scooter video but what I'm more concerned about is Making sure that we prep this right, clean it up. Because there's no adhesive to it other than gluing the joints together. And that's going to be super glue. Uh, with some, uh, we're going to need a mallet hammer. A mallet hammer, there it goes. There's my mallet hammer. We're going to need this bad boy jack here. Oh, let's see here if I can get it out through here. Yeah. Let's see, I'm going to open it right now. And we can put this in the rear wheel for now because we're going to start in the front and then work our way toward the back. There we go. Much easier to have the proper cutting tool. Just got to be careful where I place it. There we go. And this guy right here. Nice. It's really. I like the orange color because I don't know about black because you might forget that it's there and you start... You know reversing hardcore and when i say hardcore i mean just like going full fledged out flooring it i don't know who does that i really am cautious when i reverse okay so let me go and get this guy here unravel no no is there any oil or anything on it i just don't want any it's not bad but you definitely want to take out the package 
oh wow this seems like it's, itself is a, is a pretty good nylon it's, I thought it was like maybe some cheap rubber foam or something but this thing's like it's like solid it's like solid nylon uh, so we can decide which one will give us the most advantage of blocking this rim from ro rolling you know what I mean they call it like a, a ramp choke or a wheel choke I think this will work this is kind of high to me you think let's see if this side wind is better see it has to actually grip the cement and then grip your tire from rolling that's the whole objective of it I'm afraid if I do it this way I'm not sure what will happen my teeter tot and if it teeter tots then it might not be effective so I think we want to probably put the long way that way it gives it some time to build pressure onto more of the surface uh, horizontally before it grips it to the very back so and then what you can do is just, just kick it a little bit in I mean you don't have to but I prefer to just to have it dig in it for sure so now start building that grip so there we go that one down let's get another one in I guess I'm unboxing and uh, showing you what they are same time this is what they are they're in the description below by the way if you need it I'm not sure that'll be a specialty tool um, I'll probably put it just for specifically for this video, but I don't think I'll probably endorse this for any other. But um, they look really nice. Really tough too, actually. Um, they're probably not must-have unless you're really working on this car uh, wheels all the time. But definitely nice to have a good pair of uh, wheel chokes, they call them. There you go. Car, tire, wheel. I guess it's spelled choke. I'm not sure. Let's see if there's any directions how to put it. I guess they you just go by your own preference. Uh, prevent up to 20,000 pounds of trucks and trailer from unintentionally moving or rolling overturn. So it's actually really made for heavy duty trailers too. But I just really like the, the fit and finish of it. It looks really nice. Okay, let's go and kick this guy on the back too. We'll also have to put our car in tow mode, I believe. But we'll find out tow mode does anything because what we do we need to free up the wheel so we can actually you know hammer our alloy gator all around it so we'll need to turn the wheel and besides we want to because we want to face a certain way preference wise for me the valve stem is the key point of anchor all right give it a kick i'm gonna be careful not to kick my <laughs> my flaps here so there we go we got that all squared in and it's only been 30 minutes of, of uh, love. All right, so we'll get that guy back in here. So we unboxed that. I think the only thing we need again is that mallet. So unfortunately, I don't know if the, ma uh, not the mallet, but I, uh, the PCP pipe cutter. But since I don't know which one it is in here, we have to open each one of these little brown ones. And I'll explain to you what they are at the same time. So let's see here. Maybe I'll get lucky and get it right away. These are like the same as the other ones, but they're just taller. You can see this one. I like it because it's cute. It's only like, what, about maybe eight inches. These guys must be a little bit, about maybe 10 inches. So you can see here, long press. I think these are awesome inventions. I gotta give credit for the Chinese. They're always innovating. They're taking our ideas and making it a little bit more accessible to the masses. Uh, here goes tubing cutting. Oh, there it is. This is the one we needed. This is the tubing cutting tool right here. And sealed really well. You're gonna need a cutter to cut the tool cutter out. <laughs> so there we go. All right, I think that's it. We're closing this guy for today. He did his job. And this is the rest of it. It's gonna be done by this guy. There it is, really cool. Again, all these items here and tools will be in the description below. Oh yeah, looks pretty nifty. Oh yeah, it's sharp. Uh, it's very sharp, by the way. I would not want to test this out with your finger in there and just try to see what it can do. It can snap it. It literally would probably cut through the bone. But yeah, it's definitely made to, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark it where we're gonna cut it first, which I'll, I'll go in detail once we get the car jacked up. And then with the car jacked up, we need as a special uh, little pod so it doesn't scrape the battery. Um, well, underneath anyway, not just the battery, but the whole tire underneath. So let me go ahead and get everything here squared in. So these are pretty much the main tools we need. 
you know, you're gonna need some Johnson's baby shampoo to lubricate it, a little spray bottle, a cutter. Um, those are probably essentials. And then what else we're gonna need is something, I forgot to mention if it's in here. Uh, maybe it's in the front, who knows? I thought I brought it. I didn't bring it, shame on me. Forget it the second time around because I went back around just to make sure I brought it. And it doesn't seem like I might have it in hand when I thought I had it in hand. I might, let's see. All right. Oh, the mallet hammer, of course. We're gonna need our mallet hammer as well. And let's see how this guy is. I try to get one all rubber, but this will do just fine. You know, as long as you're really careful when you're hitting it, the mallet hammer, because I think this is still tough nylon and this is rubber. So there's no metal exposed, but still you don't want to take a chances with harder surface, with harder surface. So this is really what we're aiming for. This is a 16 ounce, by the way. This right here, give it a good tap. Hopefully there's nothing else exposed and then we can just tap away. We're gonna be tapping that guy on there. So this is it. I'll lay out all the tools. Mallet hammer, uh, baby shampoo with a spray. You don't need that much, but just let you know. And then you're gonna need this. Pliers. You're gonna need the actual alligator set. Comes pretty much, I believe it's certain 13 up to 21, so. You can even fit a scooter rim on these guys. I'm not sure why, but you could. Uh, the chances are you scraping your scooter rim is pretty rare, maybe the rear wheel perhaps, but you should be out of control. All right, so what we need now is what's called adhesive uh, promoter. It's optional, really. It's not something you really need or else it ain't gonna work, but I kind of like to do it because, you know, I brought it and I just can't figure out for the life of me why I don't have it with me. Maybe I have it, but it fell in through the cracks. Oh, by the way, also you'll need the, I would recommend you might as well get the safety feature of getting the slime kit. It's gonna inflate your tire for you. Again, it's, these are optional, but I think it's probably a must have for safety. It's gonna inflate your tire for you and also reflate it back, but you can also in insert slime in there. So we're gonna open that guy up too to use his uh, compression. It comes with a little car charger, so you don't actually have to have a wall outlet anywhere and I'm littering everywhere. I just can't find the life of me where that adhesive promoter can just disappear on me. The only thing I can think of is I did bring it. <laughs> it's right here. I put it in my little stash there so it won't roll anywhere and yet I don't believe in myself to know that I put it right here securely. It was just nicely tucked in there, look at that, hidden. So this is it. This is accelerate. What this does, it actually speeds up the process of. This already comes with super glue. Not this one right here, but the alloy gator set already comes with super glue, and the the thing that actually clips on and everything comes with a little some little metal, um, almost like razor blade looking with teeth in there to help it hook to the tire rim more. But it doesn't come with any extras like you're gonna need your mallet hammer. You're gonna need a PCP pipe cutter tool or what they call it. Yeah, pretty much, um, you know, cutter. You're gonna need a spray bottle to lube, create some kind of lube substance so it can slide in easily without force. And then these are probably optional. If you can deflate your tire somehow and inflate it back, but I recommend gets getting these guys here now, that way you don't have to worry. So these are pretty much all the tools for sure that you need that I can remember. Now, if the weather does as good, we can begin to start. So here we go. Unless it starts raining, I'm really, <laughs> really timing is off. All right, so I'm gonna shove these, all these little boxes back here. I'll clean them up a little bit later nicely where we're gonna put them. But for right now, we gotta get started. And I think this is it. This is all the tools we really need to do efficient, effective. Oh, and remember again, I would recommend if you're gonna incline like this, if you don't have a level field, I would just do it anyway. Uh, you know, this this is kind of incline where the rear is more slanted down. So for safety, it's a good thing because when I free the wheel up, 
I'm gonna put in towing mode. Let's see what happens if it rolls back or anything like that. We'll know. So let's go and bring this forward, shall we? If you want to get a chair to help your back, you can. The little pillow, if you're gonna, you know, prepare to knee down a little bit and reaching the the rim. But more than likely, you're gonna spin it up to your waistline. Everything you're gonna do on it, so it shouldn't be too bad. I guess we could start on this side of the wheel. That way, if my brother-in-law comes back with his truck, I won't have to worry about being barricaded and working. Yeah, the other ones are open, so we can go and get started on this one right here. So these are it. These are all the tools. You guys are seeing this in real time. There's no uh, editing because I'll be honest with you, I don't know how to edit a video. So anything I say, um, I might say it and doing something else different. So you guys can watch me and just kind of figure it out. You know, if I'm saying it's an eight millimeter, I'm holding a, a 10 millimeter socket. Well, you guys can see it for yourself. All right, so there we go. Oh, the pod, we also need a pod. There we go, I knew we were missing one more thing. So we're gonna need that little pod soon. Let me put this somewhere where it doesn't, if it does spill, it's not gonna fall over the place or get kicked over. There we go. This will probably be the safest bet. Backing. All right, so this is the pod that we're thinking. They usually come instead of four, but you can only use one at a time, right? Because you only have one jack. So that defeats the purpose of knowing if you need all four right away. And put this little tool back in here. Got a lot of these little flat screwdriver come really much in hand, especially when you have to go buy one. Glad they actually provide it. Okay, there's so much more um, accessories I wanna bring out to you, but for right now, let's focus on getting the gator rim set uh, up and on. There it is. Look at that, it says three also. Pretty cool, huh? Model three. Close this now, say goodbye to the accessories for right now. We'll come back and look at it, do more stuff with it. Okay, so going back, I'm gonna bring my pillow here because I'm about to lay and dirty myself. You can get cardboard or something, probably be easier. But I guess I have a little luxury here. We're about to throw this pillow away anyway. I'm not sure why, maybe there's bed bugs. I don't know. <laughs> um, reintroducing and bring it back to them. Okay, so there should be a little slit. You can see here. Sorry. We're going underneath here. Dirty. Oh. There you go. See that? Well, I'll see. I'll show you from reference as I'm going down. It's sort of just below the A pillar, slightly, maybe about I would say about a good eight inches uh, further down from the A pillar, further down toward the rear. So you can see there it is. Okay, and it actually holds pretty snug. Not sure you guys can see this, but let me see if I can. There we go. There we go. Nice, nice, more clear shot of this, huh? Now you guys can actually see really what's in there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just put this little nipple, and it's gonna match it up. It's gonna match it up. Okay, here we go. It's gonna match up like that. And I think if you poke it in, it'll probably even stick for you temporarily. So let's see if I can do it there. Oh, no, it won't for me anyways. Some of them might. Uh, this one's pretty much a good fit. All right, so we're working on this wheel. The reason why we don't have to take the wheel off, is not like we have to take these lug nuts and remove them off. What we gotta do is get the wheel pressure off the tire. That way we can actually inflate the tire and have the tire go back a little bit. So we're gonna inflate the tire and actually all the way. And you can see what rim size this is, by the way. Uh, the tires tell you a lot. 235, 45, right 18. So that means 235, 45. Um, the 18 I know is an 18 inch wheel. Uh, now the 235, it could be uh, pretty much the diameter or the width. Uh, don't quote me on that one. I totally uh, just kind of didn't remember. But those are just the tire specs right there. But you definitely look for this right here. It says right. Uh, 18. I'm not sure if that means because it's in the right hand side. I didn't think these I maybe they are They're they're um, they're coordinated. So let's find out Let's see what this one says. This is also on the right hand side. So maybe all these tires are 235 45 r18 Maybe that one says left 
I never really paid attention to it. Uh huh. Huh. This one actually even looks different entirely. These are actually stock wheels come from the factory. 235, 45, right, 18. All right, it still says right. It might be, that doesn't mean right. It might be R, R18. You can see there, even on the left hand side. I'm sure they don't do purposely left and right because it would just be much more work, right? Oh, it tells you the max load. Right now it's currently at about 46, 48 PSI. The pins maybe in the winter time or something like that. It seems like, it, I'm not sure if it stores more or lose more. I can't remember which one, but it says right here, 50 PSI, max pressure. And then of course it tells you your rim. There we go, 235 and so forth. All right. So what's great about Tesla is actually they tell you the pressure of the air. Uh, I remember getting a flat one time. I was watching. I'm like, oh man, is this normal? It wasn't. So what you do is just scoot over here. You might have to drive for a few minutes or so before it, it recognizes things. But usually it'll tell you right here on each wheel side. You know, your left, front, rear, right, front, rear. But I'm not sure right now. Maybe it'll, it'll say when I actually... Okay, so I believe... I'm going to not try to put in tow mode and see what happens... Does it lock the wheel or something like that? Because it's on park right now. But I'm going to see. But Because normally you put in tow mode so they can actually spin the wheel perhaps. That's what is, uh, is possibly. Uh, wiper mode here when you want to clean your wipers. It comes up. It becomes loose. You can wiggle it around. A lot of people might not know that. Roll down the window. See that? You can actually. Oh, well, I thought it would be much more. Oh, yeah. You can see that. So you can change your wiper. You can take it all the way over here, but the minute you start your car, it does reset for you. Now you can't turn this one way in, one way that doesn't allow you to twist the motor so it can self, you know, break itself, let's say. So here we go again. Oh, look at that. I opened it up and went back to halfway already. And then if I'm about to drive, I'm going to hit my brakes. Well, I actually have to insert the card. Oh, by the way, if you don't have the keys, the only way to start the car gives you directions right there. Place the card in the center console pretty much. So you just place it like right there. And you can take it back out. You don't need to keep it on there because I will forget and leave the card in there. Okay, so watch, I'll put reverse. And I believe those, even though it's on service mode, the windshield blade, it should actually go down. Here we go. Oh, look at that, see, it does go down. All right, so let me go put it back in park. By the way, if you do want to put it in park, Usually when you, this car is very smart. If you open your door, it puts it in park. So for instance, let's say my foot's on the brake right now. It's on hold, right? It's automatically one pedal driving anyway. So if it slows down to a point where it's, you know, goes back to zero, it'll just put things on hold. So if you time it right, you don't actually ever have to use your brake pedal at all. That's what's cool about Tesla. I mean, you definitely say brake. I mean, it's rare that you have to actually replace the brake pads on these guys other than the normal uh, wear and tear that comes from the environment. But it probably won't be coming from usage, really. So, uh, what I was going to say? Yeah. So, you can, uh, let's say, for instance, I put in reverse. I have to hold the brakes first. Click the up arrow. It jumps to reverse, right? But check this out. It's on hold right now because I'm really not putting the accelerator. I don't want to say gas because this is really not gas. Okay, but watch. The minute I open the door up, I'm going to push the door open. So you can see. By the way, it doesn't have the uh, manual, you know, uh, lever to, you know, unlock the door, like whatever you call it. It just has a little push button like trying that releases a door the reason why is though if you know the windows will roll further down so it doesn't ruin the seal so when it, this is push it tells the window mechanism to roll down a little bit down because you're about to push the door open manually yourself with just you know your arm or something watch you'll see maybe you can see a little bit due to the little window stains here you can see it pull down when i push the button but you'll also see this put in park automatically it's on hold right now let me see if I can do it all at once. Kind of show you a little bit of the ins and outs of Tesla. Okay, here we go. Look at that. See, it puts it in park. Oh, you didn't see my... I didn't trick you or anything. My, I didn't actually have to push the park button or nothing like that. Well, if you did, you had put it in here. But, you know, you could push here. This will actually just put it in park. If you can't get access to the door, you need to put it in park right away. So let's see if I put it in reverse. Okay, and I'm not actually putting, pushing the accelerator, but if I want to put it in park without opening the door or doing anything, 
I just push this little button like this right here. Same with, uh, you know, turning on your uh, windshield. If you push it for longer than about almost a second, full second, it will actually squirt that nasty thing to clean. So you, if you were to do it quickly, I would go like this. It'll just swipe one quite quickly. The minute you hold it for a full second, you'll see this, the nasty uh, windshield fluid that uh, Tesla puts in there for you. It's really like slimy and it just makes more of a mess than it really does help, but that's just the way it is. You can change it after it's empty or whatever, but uh, so far it's rain and I got ceramic coating. I haven't really had to use my windshield too much, so I'm not worried about it. So let's go ahead and continue on. I mean, I know I'm just talking away here. A lot of things you guys want to know about the Tesla, but at the same time, a lot of things we, we need to uh, showcase here. So we're gonna go ahead and get the started here. We're gonna go ahead and work on this side, as I promised. So we'll get our jack, we'll get that jacked up. We'll get that jacked up. I feel like I'm a tough guy now. Okay, so here we go. This is like a three ton jack. This car, I believe, probably weighs like five ton. Uh, so it's a five ton car and a three ton jack. I think it's equivalent because the other weights are being distributed among the other three wheels that were not taken off the ground. So that's okay. By the way, this is the first time ever I'm actually lifting my car up. So don't think I'm a pro or anything. But again, it's not on service mode right now anyway. I mean, it's not on a towing mode. So we'll find out. Again, we just want to lift it up enough where there's no pressure and we can spin the, the wheel freely, being it deflated or inflated. Because we need to be able to rotate the wheel. Uh, the first time we uh, set this on, we have to actually deflate the entire wheel. Okay, let's make sure. I believe this has a controlling, there it goes, it spins it. If you ever use a, uh, a jack before, you have to counterclockwise it spin all the way for it to build pressure to loosen it. You pretty much do a counterclock turn and it actually loosens it for you. Good morning. So now here we go, we're gonna go and put this in here. And I'm gonna try my best here. First to get out of his way, because then we need to bring the jack in. Okay. Sorry, I'm kind of holding like a little amateur here. All right, so, all right, so let's see how far. What's great about this is it's actually a low profile jack, which you want to make sure you get one like these. That way you have some time to get in there because especially if you have a low profile tire. Oh, this is actually a Pittsburgh brand, interesting enough. I don't know if I trust it, but that's okay. It's Harbor Freight. Sometimes some good qualities come out of it. All right, so here we go. We are gonna bring our jack to that little, the whole area. So, uh, I think it's there. We won't know yet until it jacks up a little bit. All right, so uh, being down here, glad my, actually my brother-in-law moved this car. If you look at it, I would have had no room to work really. Oh, I have to twist this all in, make sure the hydraulic there you go. Now it's in. There you go. Start lifting now. Now, before it goes lift further, I'm gonna make sure I'm semi close. Wow, one little lift, it shoots it up there. All right, see, I'm almost there. There we go. You guys probably can see a little bit. I'm almost there. I think this is it. Okay. What I did was I lifted up. I'm oh, sorry. I lifted it up so you guys can. I lifted it up so you guys can see where it's gonna be falling in. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and jack. Oh. And then before you jack all the way, you still have some time to wiggle this around to make sure it's actually inside the nipple. I mean the nipple is inside the little uh, perfect canal for it. Because the bad thing you wanna do is jack the nipple onto a surface that wasn't there. But anyway, the nipple is on there now, so I can go ahead and, there we go. All right, now I have to get up on my body weight because I'm not be able just to do this with one arm <laughs> twisted over laying down because I have to put a little bit of body weight on it. But I just wanna make sure again, again, this is like over paranoid, but I just wanna make sure the nipple's in there. I mean, it's not gonna damage the battery by you lifting the jack raw, but you don't wanna put teeth marks on your nice flat bottom surface of your Tesla. Especially these things are plastic, you know? Ugh. The battery probably won't reach yet. So here we go. 
so okay you guys gonna see this bad boy lift again it's putting more pressure in the rear wheel now because there's nothing gripping the front so it's mostly due to the pressure of the rear wheel but again it's on brake mode so there we go I feel the tire is getting off the ground you guys can see that while I'm doing this I'm inspecting it God, these pods, these pods really do take a beating on there, don't you guys? Again, these pods are available in my description below. Uh, be careful, don't play around. If you put your fingers in here, I wouldn't recommend it just to wiggle it now because there's so much pressure from the car and you don't know how level this jack is already to this point. So just in case that pod ever fails on you, it will crush the pod and it'll also snap your hands or fingers right off. So don't even put your finger in there, it's not worthy. Just go ahead and just examine it from afar like this. Do not put your finger in between those jaw gripping tons. At least you got 2.5 tons going down on you. And uh, so we're gonna leave it at that. So be really, really careful around these kind of things. And let's see if I can even spin my wheels right now. See, I can't spin it yet because it's still, it's still not off the ground entirely. So we'll just do a little bit more. Oh, almost. See, I just want to get it off the ground. I don't. I don't need to. Uh, there we go. Very, very good. Very good. I can spin the wheels now. You know, this is probably all I really need to do if I really want to just get this angled right. I can spin the wheel. Again, we're not taking off the wheel. We just want to be able to turn it. Oh, all right. So we're gonna do a little bit more. Just a little bit. It goes pretty much a long way. There we go. I think this is probably free right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's free. This is all we really need. So we're gonna go and uncover the valve. Then these things were black, by the way, <laughs> when I first got them. But I guess the black turned into some kind of <laughs> copper gold or something. It's almost just like my trunk, but that's okay. Uh, they still look pretty cool. I'll keep them in my pocket here. All right, so let's go and open this guy up. See what's available. I'm gonna go and bring this chair here, help my back. Manure. Very nice, everything's coming together. Be careful when you place this. You don't wanna actually have it hit your car, which is perfectly distanced, by the way, that you look at it. It's not gonna go any further in. So I guess they really well thought of this execution on this jack. It's great to keep all your tools right here when you need them. They're plastic, so it's not gonna bang up on anything. And then your, this one is a little bit tricky to do, but you just spray on it before you actually touch the glue. So you got to time it just right. And here we go, the moment we've been waiting for. Let me guys put this guy right here. Holds it perfectly. This is it. This is the alloy gator. This is pretty much the graphite, the closest match you get for your Tesla, supposedly. Oh yeah. Look at that. They, they have a one-time usage super glue. I and mean, then once you break it, more than likely, it's not like a cap you can just put back on. Maybe it is, actually. But it says alloy gator. Look at that. War chest. Very cool. All these little trickets come with it. Nice. Okay, we'll put that aside. Oh, by the way, these are these little metal teeth I was telling you about. That were, like I call them gator teeth, so really. You insert them in to help further... There's only one way to insert them. As well as these caps here, there's only one way to actually put them on. You can't do it the wrong way unless you put the, <laughs> the whole gator the wrong way. But there's little nipples on them too. And I was first, I'm like, why would they put a nipple there to interfere with you flying and flush the cap on there? But there is a reason for it because they, the nipple actually helps hold this in place and doesn't move around or shift out on you. Uh, just extra security. It'll still work without the cap, but the cap also not just to protect the imperfect uh, crease mark that's open but just also adds on a little bit of tension closure. I'm not sure what this keychain does, but it looks like I don't see a lot of people using it. I guess it's supposed to help you maybe force alignment or something, I don't know. But it says alligator on there. Comes away, likes a little steel keychain. Pretty cool. Maybe it's just a little souvenir or something you can carry with you to remember what you have protected. But uh, let's go and take a look at the alligator itself. Ta-da! Moment of truth, unboxing. 
comes with it. And it comes with instructions too. Right here off the poop bottom. I think I uh, watched the video a little bit. Someone did it. Didn't speak any word, but however, it was very informative. Um, I'll probably link that description below too to help you guys further if I can't. So you can see here, there's that little nipple. And when the cap closes, it closes that imperfection gap there. I'm not sure why they left the gap there. I think it's so you have enough time to correct yourself. It needs to be pushed in a little bit more. However, you cut it short, there's no way of correcting a shortness that much more. But if you cut a little slice short, you can always cover it up. But if you cut way short, then you're pretty much out of luck there. But if you cut too much, let's say you have excessive, you can always cut that down, see? So you can always correct excessive, but once you cut too, too short, I'd say too short is probably half an inch or more. You definitely want, don't want to cut too short half an inch or more. Okay, so the instructions are there. We'll leave it out here. Maybe it'll inspire us to see something that we didn't think of. But so far, I'm not worried about it. It doesn't seem too complicated. He uses the same little, uh, one of those little gator clips there to actually inflate the tires. And we could do the same trick. Let's see. Uh, but these are it. You'll soak these up with the this, you know, our slip solution as well is spraying it down here, wiping it clean. In fact, we should wipe our wheels clean first, actually. So let's do that. I love this spray. Makes you feel like you're a professional, I don't know, uh, but I don't know, paint shop or something. But it just, it's like aerosol, uh, but there's no aerosol. You know what I mean? It's so convenient because it really uses the water effectively in the areas that you need it, not you know, glumped up somewhere where it goes mostly back into your towel and then just dries up or waste. You know what I mean? So anyway, I'm doing this purposely also to clean the wheel area here and the rim rim corners, but also as a good lube. All right, so there we go. That's all lube. And let's start. Uh, first of all, we need that little clippers that came with. Again, there's no adhesive other than bonding the gator itself together. There's no glue, I should say. Uh, need it until we get to that bottom part. Be careful with these things. They're small. They're gray. They can fall out on you. They were in the pack, but I guess some of them uh, kind of cut through the little, the little inner cap. A little, little um, what do you call that? <laughs> they, they even cut through these guys here. So there we go. I got a few of them out. There's one more. I'm not sure they get, they probably give you a little extras. Who knows? There might be. You can see here where it cut it. It cut itself out through here, look. Just kind of broke out. <laughs> yeah. It's enough there where it broke out. So over here it's fine. Okay. So we use this right here to inflate the tire. So what you do is, I'm learning as we go as well. You can put it in there. It shows like they're doing some kind of weird adjustment shape. I'm not doing it all there, but okay. It just helps hold it. I mean, you could hold it all if you're yourself here. I'm not sure how long it takes to inflate a tire, but it feels nice and cold air actually. Let's see if I can do that trick they're showing. I mean, if you can use everything from their tool, why not, right? The guy makes it so freaking easy because he probably did it so many times. That's what you have to understand. A lot of these people make things look easier because they probably did it like repetitively like a hundred times before you guys saw it on video. And here I am trying to tell you what I've seen just now and doing it with you. Alright. Look, I almost had it. I really did. Okay, so let's let me let me go for it again. I'll get an aim for it. I could take the tire pressure. I could remove the valve stems of it. I mean the actual little center stem. Oh, it feels really nice and cold. All right, let's see the picture here. Let's see what it really shows us how to take it off. All right, let's see here. Yeah, I thought so. Not really good close up. <laughs> Ensure fit and suitable and one negated prior to inserting the wheel. Uh, we're on our own in that one. There's no special key for it. They're all the same, I believe. 
Let me make sure of that. Yeah, they all look the same to me. There's no special teeth that just to inflate your tire. So if that's the case, we are on our own. Just try and see where, how they wedge it and keep it in there. Oh, I think I got it. Almost got it. I thought I got it. Look at that. You can you have to wedge it like somewhere. Just try and learn a trick here. Sorry. I could probably just go and just use that player tool from the slime, but I figure you guys probably want to know how to use the same tool if you don't have inflator. Or you can just hold it for however long you can. Okay, because what's great about the slime tool is it allows you to open the stem up here. here. That way you can insert the slime in there. So that's why the slime tool... First, one thing why I got the slime tool, other than being able to actually pump the air back for you. Because it's not like a, you know, not like a bike pump where you can just pump it by foot maybe. Unless you have a really strong foot pump. So, let me go ahead and let's open this up. This is a slime kit here for your own. I went open and oh wow it's nice and bright now it's a good sign it might look like we have a few more hours before the sights to go dim on this look the skies are beautifully cleared oh yeah i think we're good okay let's go and see opens from the side i guess nice i want to keep the package too actually i don't think i'll ever use this other than an emergency so that's why i'm thinking maybe keep it nicely in this package just for instructions reasons has a little inner lock here just kind of scoot that out okay slide it right out the box and packaging looks pretty damn good a little moisture packs there don't ever eat those <laughs> put on your shoes and stuff like that i forgot what they're called though but they're for and right, just actually let's see what's in the box Okay, it comes with the sealant, the air, and this the spare. Equals spare. Okay. Sealant this equals a spare. You don't need a spare, it says pretty much, because this thing does it all. Alright, it's like your first aid kit for your tire. There you go. I do carry a first aid kit with me. Why not my tire, right? It's supposed to get you from point A to point. You can see it's been sealed. I can't really break it. Unless I get my cutter. Which we're gonna use right now. Overkill just to cut a little tie strap, but and see how sharp this guy is. Here we go. Get him in there like this. You guys can see that? Cutting time. Nothing bad. Nothing bad. Wasn't fast as my other cutter though. I mean my garden cutter actually it really snapped it like pop. Maybe that was just a soft Slime control. Look at that. Now we can actually check our tire gauge. Let's see where our tire. I'm not even sure how to read this manually and usually everything digital. But let's see. I guess you just poke it through, right? Let's see if I can angle it so you guys can see it when it comes out the other end. Okay, there we go. So we're pretty at. You can see there? Looks like. I don't know, 25 PSI right now? Yeah, 25 PSI and going further down. I think it's almost actually gone, really. There's nothing left to inflate. Uh, yeah, about 20, 20 PSI. Or maybe that's holding it back. Okay, so let's see here for the tools that we need. There it goes. These are the, the little slime tool. It comes with the hose, it comes with the air compressor, and the actual slime itself, which I'm not gonna touch right now because it's not an emergency. So this kit is pretty freaking awesome. And it comes with an adapter too, in case you need it to use it for your jumper of your car. So if you can't get access to a, a car charger, you can get straight to the uh, battery right here because you can put it through their car charger sort of adapter and it hooks to the positive and negative of your actual battery itself. So that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna close this guy up. And there is actual slime filler once you remove the 
Are these sorry my phone died unfortunately the gator glue they gave me it's already hard as a rock <laughs> even though i just cut it open um you can see here i put a little slit in there i just just took a little slit and cut it but i actually was able to peel this guy back out this little cap of his or whatever it is but you can see here on the bottom it's just hard gel i mean not even hard gel it's already been crystallized so uh, it's unfortunate. So lucky I have another pair of super glue. That's all this is really is just super glue. So I was going back and reading the instructions. See that? It's just like, it's like, yeah, it's just, it's just crystallized already. So uh, I got the gorilla super glue. That's probably reliable. So here we go. Yep. But you normally would get a super glue that's probably better than mine. I'm not sure what happened here. It was a brand new uh, super glue package, but for whatever reason. It decided just to dry up. Look at that. So uh, I cut it open thinking, okay, easy score. It's like, do I have to break it first? Crush it? You know how those things are where you crush the chemical. It's a one-time use. So that's why I thought this would be the same. But you can see here, it wasn't really <laughs> anything with it come out. For whatever reason, maybe it got iced in or something. Well, anyway, it's, 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 it's not worthy. Not worthy of putting the Alloy Gator name on you. All right, so we'll leave this alone. Unfortunately, couldn't even do anything with it. So we got this one. I got it already out of the package. Uh, by the way, I also got the valve stem remover and took out the valve. I'll show you right now again. See if I have that tool still hanging around here. There it is. It's like a keychain sort of. It came from the green pack of the slime that I was opening to show you. There we go. It was just coming, it came in like it. It's a little green packet here like this. And this is my gator clip, of course. So all I did was just take this tool out, close the back. And then what it is, as you can see here, it has a little slit on it. And that slit is what actually removes your valve stems. Watch, I'll show you. And by the way, even though it's removed, you can still push it and you can still get more air on it. It's not entirely removed all the way, but even if you remove it all the way, you still can able. So you pretty much lefty loosey. You feel like a little niche. Be careful, you do not want to damage these stems or else you're gonna replace the whole, uh, pretty much valve, valve stem, the whole stem. The inner, if you strip it or over tighten it, you don't want to do that. There it is. See, that's all it really is right here. Bring it closer to you guys so you guys can see it. It's pretty much coming from this like this. See how it grips it? locks it in and then you just turn it counterclockwise to loosen it or clockwise to retighten it but you can leave it on there after it's already been taken out so it looks like from the inside it's just a little hollow okay all right so anyway my soap already dried up so i'll have to do it again which i'm glad you guys are back on all right so let's go and put this guy back in even though the tire is inflated i can feel it i can it's still a hard tire you know it's not a run flat tire or anything where it still has uh, heavy pressure where you can ride it while it's flat that's what they call a run flat so if you get flat you can still run with it so this is not a run flat tire special way to do run flat tires you'll probably have to use a machine uh, to break the beads they call this the bead when you break it away from the surface of the rim and that way you can get in between it so oh, I don't want to tighten it well you can tighten it now because this it, the next step will be to inflate it really not much you will feel grip okay don't turn it when there's no grip all right that's good enough. And then if you push it, you'll still get more air out. It just closes that seal for the air to not leak. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna use our super glue. And what it says here, since this we know it's an 18 inch wheel, um, somewhere earlier we saw it. If I had to twist the whole wheel, I could spin it actually. Let's see here. Spin it like Wheel of Fortune. Uh, There we go, 235, 45, 18. And I'm, I'm not gonna say right anymore. Uh, it might be reinforcement. That's what it probably stands for. So we're gonna keep this guy up above us. In fact, here, look, I'll look at it. I'll line it right there, like right here. I'll use this shock as a reference, supposedly. Or can I? Let's see, we'll find out. I guess we can, because huh? this thing's supposed to be balanced, right? So we'll do our best. It's not gonna have to be perfect. It is just a personal preference of mine, really. So I'm gonna try to line up to here. Oh, it doesn't really matter. I'm working on this first anyway, so I can wherever my angle is comfortable at. 
Okay, so first of all, you just gotta cut it open and then get your super glue ready. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert all these small teeth here. And by the way, if you look at it, see 18 size? They're numbers, look at that, 18. If you go higher, 19 inch, 20 inch, you can see it's upside down, but you get the idea, 20. Okay, and then we have 21. And that's it, 21. So pretty much we're gonna put this all the way up to 18 and then we're gonna cut it. And it goes all the way further down. Like, I'm not sure how small, I think it says 13, right? So you can see here, this doesn't have numbers. Doesn't have numbers, doesn't have numbers. Doesn't have any number. Doesn't have any number. Then all of a sudden it'll probably eventually get numbers, okay? It starts at 13 right there, bam. And you're gonna put this and you're gonna hit it clockwise while turning the wheel clockwise. And the other way, when you're doing the other time, you're going to hit it counterclockwise. So it's like a back and forth movement. Okay, so we're going to start. We're going to start in the very beginning. Um, well, actually, what we got to do is look for the one that has the loop. I believe is There you go. You want to make sure you start in this little guy right here, the little nipple, where the nipple is going to go into, where the cap is. So never cut on this side at all, where the, the little nipple hole is. Avoid that. That's your beginning point. That's your be there permanently so we can start here and we'll work all the way until 18 so let's get our glue ready this is a gel one so I'm not sure uh, how we use the other one is uh, pretty simple too if you want to get it really quickly shake well hopefully this doesn't give us any problems gorilla brand all right this looks pretty frosty okay all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a dap See if I can squeeze it first of all. I don't feel no air coming out of the other end, so I might have to clean it up. Worst thing to do is fearful is squeezing the heck out of it and all of a sudden spreads out everywhere. Okay, so this one also needs a little cleaning up. I'm not sure if I can cut it or what, but that's what we gotta cut it for here. And when we cut it, you can see how this is angled first. It's a good three millimeters, so it's perfect right there in the middle middle. Maybe a good five millimeters actually. So we just want to take a little snippet of it. Wow, very nice and sharp, by the way. Looks like it's almost like trimming a candlestick. Really, you can almost just do this way. Nice and sharp. Okay, that should break the whatever glue was was bonding it originally. All right. So let's start, shall we? Again, we want to start on the side where there's a nipple. That's going to be our reference point. I believe this is it. So that little nipple hole, I mean. There it is, that little nipple hole. This is the side we want. And let's give it a dap. Come on. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, there it goes. I see the gel. It's a gel base. Oh, there it goes. I shook it weird it's weird that you have to shake it oh there it goes look it's coming out you don't need much kind of spread it a little bit do it carefully because first time doing it and then you can see it only goes a certain way I got a feeling it's gonna make a mess on my fingertips but, oh well it's gotta be, it's gotta be me. All right, maybe I could put this, get an angle or release my finger easily. There we go, it should slide in there. I'm supposed to dig in, come out the other side, but there we go. All right, there we go. I didn't get my finger wet, so that's good. There we go, perfect. One down, right? <laughs> we only got 18, uh, 17 more to go, uh, being an 18 inch wheel. Okay, one down. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. Okay, so it creates a little claw effect. I guess they can't do this in the factory. They probably need us to do it. So it creates a little bit of the resistance. That little claw there. Not sure how much that'll dig into your rim on the back area. I'm not sure that's... I don't think that's supposed to be for the tire. I think it is for the rim. So it's going to probably eat a little bit of the inside internal rim face. So when it actually comes inside... It'll create a hook to not be able to lift that easily. 
Okay, so we got that one down. Let's go ahead and do the rest. Oh, I'm going actually the other way. Okay. I can do two at a time, huh? I don't think I'm getting that good. Maybe I'm going to get greedy and go three at a time. Either way, I want to close this cap as soon as possible. And I could spray some adhesive on there to speed it up, but I think it'll be fine. Let's see here. Close the cap up just to make sure. All right, let's go ahead and get all these guys. Where are you? Where are you, little clippers? I gotta go find the clippers. I thought I had it somewhere around here. Huh. There it is. It's all here. All right, so what I'll do is probably, let me go ahead and set this guy down. That way I can work on it comfortably without squeezing the camera between my legs and trying to do it at the same time. I'll still try angle it where you guys can see all the shots. All right. Okay, here we go. All right, so what we're gonna do is put him on now. All right. Guess I'll have to dirty my pants. I'm not that good. Okay, so you can see here, it's giving us some time here. Still a gel base, which is kind of nice. It's not dripping everywhere. So if you do get super glue, try to get a gel base one. And it will go in. See here, I just make a mess already. Ah. <laughs> you talk about super glue, sticky fingers, and really permanent sticky fingers. All right, come on, guy. Mm-hmm. Mm, there we go. Beautiful. Yeah, uh, and I'm getting a little super glue tack on me. Alright. This is probably where the time consuming is, right? I haven't even started to hammer yet. There we go. You start getting a groove of it and start feeling how to put it in as you go. With experience you always get faster. I'm sure the people here can who put the gators on, I could probably do in their sleepwalk if they carry the right mallet hammer and so forth with them. <laughs> All right. All right, there we go. All right, here we go. Guess we could do three at a time, maybe. All right, this is getting there. messy here. Don't want the plastic close up on me. Okay. You guys can probably see it. There we go. All right, close this up. Let's get three more here. Get a groove for it. If you go forward first and then backward like this, slide back. Uh, there we go. It fits right in. Feels like it's not gonna go every. Oh shoot. I landed my palm right on here. Look at that. Oh, no. Don't worry. This is not going to show anyway. It's mainly this guy right here we're going to show. So, a little bit of a super glue residue. Got a little bit of my skin on there. Super glue does burn your eyes, too, if you can smell it. You'll probably get close to your eyes. There we go. 
I think vinegar usually takes it out. I keep rubbing the next one. I'm not really efficient, am I? <laughs> I got one down just to rub the other one off. All right, here we go. That's just fine. Cool. We got that there now. It's like an arts and craft workshop here today. All right. Where are we at right now? Let's see what it says. Oh, it hasn't even gotten to the 13 yet. <laughs> oh, shoot. We got a long ways to go. All right, let's go. We got like two or three more wheels. I'll probably do this for this one or two wheels just to see. And then you guys can follow me because I really don't want to have you guys just wait on me just doing the same repetitive stuff, you know? You're not learning anything new. Okay, here we go. Well, I learned not to put my hands there. How about that? And I'm learning to be a little bit quicker with the super glue like this. Got to get a little pressure. I'm shaking because I'm squeezing much as I can. Oh, you have to shake it forward. I get it. There it comes out. Still kind of maybe a liquid base or something. Okay, so I'm going to be really careful this time. Pay attention to my next one here that's going to loop me. It's going to do me dirty. It's already doing me dirty right now, actually. Because look at that. <laughs> it's flickering everything around. These super glue. They... Oh, snap, snap. It fits really nice once it gets in there anyway. They don't show you these in the seven minute installation video, huh? <laughs> this is a lot more detail. All right. Oh, come on. There we go. There we go. It's like, it's like a perfect fit. Yeah, I'm sure they really study this process right here. Again, I'm not sure why it doesn't come already preloaded with the thing on there, but I guess maybe cut down costs. Have you do it, you can enjoy the, or know the, the power of the gator clips. All right, so we got there, there. All right. I never knew super glue would actually stick on the steel, but but I guess these are, maybe that was a special super glue, who knows? But I think this helped just a little bit, just a little bit of reassurance, you know? There we go, one, 16, oh, almost there. We're on 16 now, look at that. Oh, you just shake it a little bit. Get that guy over there. And then 17, and we'll save for 18 for last, so second here, all right. Almost, almost. So we'll start. This is 17 right here. You can see there. I guess I, I work one corner then. I try to jab at one corner and then I go back and try to force the rest of it, all, the whole body in. Uh, kind of lift up and in. That's what I'm trying to do. It allows me to. It's always got to be that last one that's a, a pain in the butt. Oh, there we go. There we go. A little messy. A little sticky messy, but it'll work. Also, I think I'm coming down with the cold. They say if you have an itchy throat, it's not the coronavirus, so I have an itchy throat. So I guess this is the regular common flu or cold. But I hate staying in bed and not doing anything. Just doesn't make things happen. I figure I do something I like. Um, your mind's off from your sickness. So you probably feel better. And this is what I like to do. Fix up my ride so I can enjoy it for years to come. And protect it. This is the purpose of putting those alloy gators on their Tesla Model 3 anyways. I'm probably the first few that have actually done this. I'm not sure why. I see a lot of those like rim bands and stuff like that. And I don't think they're really that protective. I mean, there's no solid grip to them. It's nothing but adhesive. And adhesive, you know, when you have tons of, you know, rim like this, like scraping, I mean, that's a lot of force just to have adhesive hold that bad. I don't think so. I really don't. I don't believe in it. I mean, it's probably like a one-time light use maybe. 
but I think these alligators are probably the real deal because the fact is they actually go inside the the tire surface where you actually need it so all right last one last one 18 there we go look at that my my hands are getting sticky I should we should have done this first in fact we could do it for all of them right now while I'm here on the ground anyway so what I'll do is I'll do it for all of them right now I'll pause this video or uh, you know put it back in the charger that way by the time it gets a little bit more charged you guys can pretty much just see me do the, the, the other stuff so well, that's what I'll do I'll go ahead and uh, put this video um, on pause but to you guys you'll, you won't notice it so let me just get this last one in that way you guys will know for this rim anyway look at that I almost got it in but it just doesn't feel like it wants to go in and it There we go. It's got to go in. You got to have it flush. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. So there we go. Look at it from the inside. Look like little alligator teeth. Little baby teeth everywhere. All around. That's why I didn't want it. I didn't want to get any kind of adhesive on this surface. So make sure I can scrape it off. I'm afraid to touch the front. I don't want to touch the front at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you guys a measurement here. When it's actually on the 18th. So let's say, for instance, back out a little bit so you guys can see the whole rim. Okay, so so it's going to be, this is the 18th, right? Uh, right here. Well, it was covered now. This is the 19th. Let's say You can see there, it's the 19th now. 18 was one over that we already covered so that means this thing right here needs to reach like this around here and it, it does eventually teeth it in right here it's, it's kind of once you know everything's cut and everything like that it should even out right here so this is probably meaning where our, our 18 might be like right here if I lay it up on my rim you guys will see in a little bit here see that perfect 18 inch rim that's where it would be okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in pause I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest for all other three that I have here and that will speed the process of shooting this video all right Michael from NCY store I'll see you guys back and to you guys won't even notice